Hi, I'm Hannah Wallace and welcome to Finextra TV. Kindly calling into our virtual studio today to talk about cloud outsourcing is Daniel Mayer, Head of Banking and Financial Services Consulting at Cognizant. So, Daniel, thank you very much for calling in. It's good to have you on. Good to see you, Hannah. Good to see you too. So, yes, this is a really interesting topic and I want to start the interview by sort of setting the scene and getting you to highlight where we're up to with the development of cloud infrastructure to date and uh, particularly around the areas of partnering arrangements outside banks and financial institutions and, you know, a bit about the benefits and challenges here as well. So let's start there. Sure. It's a, it's a fascinating area, which I think has come a long way. Um, there's barely a conversation that goes by where cloud isn't mentioned. I think some of the things that we're seeing at the moment, firstly, is a move towards preferred models of cloud. So we're seeing most people moving towards a hybrid model and away from a private cloud model, which I think is significant. Um, you mentioned partnerships. We're, we're seeing increasing use of the global cloud providers, so Google, Amazon and Microsoft, and increasing collaboration. Those organisations much more or now seen as partnerships rather than supply relationships, which I think, again, is a positive thing. Uh, particularly around the benefits, so cost and scale are, um, are the main benefits that people look for, but also innovation and increasingly security. They're both focus areas for financial institutions, and they're also areas which I think they believe that cloud can deliver a lot of value for them. In addition to the benefits we've talked about, there are also some challenges which financial institutions need to consider, principally the loss of control that some feel when an external partner is delivering their infrastructure services for them. And in addition to that, we've also got the new skill which is required in terms of managing supplier delivery, whereas previously financial institutions would be managing employees, people that work directly for them. They're now managing relationships with external partners, which brings an additional level of complexity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think it's fair to say that financial institutions and banks like uh, together have a lot to consider, don't they? So um, how can they best go about balancing, reducing costs, being it more agile in delivering to market, maintaining stability of their cloud infrastructure, while also maintaining uh, the integrity and security. So there is a lot to consider, isn't there? There is, and it's it's almost the holy grail actually to try to to, to deliver all those together. Um, one thing I think is is really having a roadmap for delivery. So um, particularly trying to balance the security with the speed of innovation. It's looking towards migrating relatively small volumes of transactions and relatively stable and secure services quickly. So you'd always say to stabilize, then automate and then migrate. So that's, that's certainly a, a good principle to work to. Um, and I think also ensuring that the security standards that are in place are equal to or greater than the ones that they would put in place internally. So when you've got an externally provided arrangement, you need to have an additional level of consideration that you potentially lose a bit of control there. So having that rigor and that robustness in place is very important as well. All right, so uh, good advice weaved in there as well. So uh, let's talk a bit more about the regulators then. What's their role in the movement to cloud? And uh, what would you say are some of the concerns and what do financial institutions really need to be aware of going forward? Well, the regulator plays a key role. Um, we think of the regulator as playing an enabling role. And I think certainly in the UK, they're doing a very good job of that. So the regulator themselves is on a path towards cloud adoption and has made some significant progress towards that. The thing that we see as being really positive in that um, movement towards cloud from the regulator and the role that they play as an enabler is the dialogue that they build up with the financial institutions. As this becomes a two-way discussion and as the regulator asks questions and sets out principles and then the financial institutions respond to those, they give input and feedback, I think you'll see the regulation being refined and a lot closer to something which is a set of principles which the banks can work to. Um, you saw recently in February of this year, there was a, a dear CEO letter from the Financial Conduct Authority to financial institutions, which whilst it didn't specifically mention cloud, it did talk a lot about operating models and technology models and how the changes that banks are looking to put in place need to maintain security, maintain confidence and maintain the level of rigour that the FCA would expect in terms of protecting, protecting customers' interests. All right, thanks for clarifying a few things there. And I want to end on my crystal ball question, as it were, uh, looking into the future. Um, what does the future hold for cloud, especially in terms of new technology? And I'd love to end on hearing a bit about what Cognizant is doing in this space. Sure. 
Well, I think we will see further migration towards cloud. It will become the norm rather than the exception. There's a good body of evidence to suggest that roughly five to eight percent of financial institutions' transactions are currently on the cloud. We see that being the majority going forward. Secondly, interoperability will be key. So the ability to plug and play with different providers will give banks a little bit more confidence that they are retaining an amount of control if they decide that their, their future path changes. And then finally, I think that um, the role that we're playing and the advice that we're giving to clients is that cloud is becoming the new digital. So as with digital to begin with, people would digitize the front end of their operations, what the customer would see, and there would be a level of still manual and human intervention behind the scenes. Cloud is very similar in that at this stage we have cloud infrastructure, which is being moved, is the big migration, but also we will see that people will tend to need to transform their operating models, their business models, and also their culture, the way in which they operate under a cloud environment. So lots more change to come, but we do see positive progress already. Brilliant. So watch this space and looking forward to catching up further down the line and reflecting on those predictions. Uh, but Daniel, thank you so much for calling in today. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you.